Welcome everyone, my name is Scott and welcome back to this tutorial series on building a space shooter game with Phaser 3. Previously, we took a look at the game we will be building in this tutorial series and we reviewed our project task list for making this happen. If you missed the previous video, there will be a link in the video description to the star source code template as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be links to the previous video if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. All right, so for our task list, the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and download our basic project files. Uh, so in the description of this video, there's going to be a link to this page on GitHub and the direct download uh, for the starting code template. Uh, so the starting code template is going to have all the assets we need for the game we're going to build, as well as the basic structure for a phase three game. Uh, so if you are interested in following along with the code in this video, uh, please go ahead and download that now and pause the video and come back once you have the assets. All right, so once you've downloaded the files, go ahead and extract those and open them in your ID of choice. And if you go ahead and open up those files, you should see a folder structure similar to this. And so what we're going to see is we'll have a basic readme that's going to have some links to a playable demo of the game, a local setup for running the game, as well as information on how to play the game and links to the assets that are used. We'll also have our project task list if you want to go ahead and use that to follow along. And then we'll have our basic index.html page, which will be our main entry point for our web application. And so this is a very basic web page with some styling and a background. And then we also have a link to our main uh, module file that we'll be using for starting our game. That will be our main.js file. We also have a link to the Phaser 3 library. Uh, so for this uh, series, we'll be using Phaser 3.80. And so if we go ahead and take a look, uh, so in our folders, we have VS Code. Uh, so this just has some recommendations for plugins if you're using VS Code. If you're not, we can go ahead and delete this folder. There's also some launch settings uh, for the extension we'll be using for our dev server. Then finally, in our settings JSON, this just has some configuration uh, for the VS Code uh, IDE. Uh, inside our assets folder, this is going to have a link to all the assets we'll use in our game. Uh, so we'll have our audio, we'll have some JSON data, our images, and then we'll have a link to the phaser library. Then docs, this just has assets that's used in our readme. So then finally we get to our source folder and this is where we'll be doing all of our code for our game. Uh, so our main.js, this is the main entry point to our application. And so this is going to create our phaser three game instance, and then we'll go ahead and add our scenes and start our game right away. Our types folder has our phaser type definitions and this type def JS file here uh, that can be used for JS uh, docs if you are interested in using that for your code. Finally, we have our phaser three game scene and it's just a very basic scene right now. Uh, where we just print out hello world. And then finally under lib, uh, we just have a reference to the phaser from the global window object. Uh, so we can use that to import uh, in our code. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to see how to run our project on a local web server. And so in order for us to actually do our development and to load our assets in our game, we need to have our assets running on a local web server uh, for security reasons. And so to do that with VS Code, there is this awesome extension uh, from Rick Day called Live Server. And I definitely recommend checking it out if you've not seen it before. Uh, but basically what it does, it allows you to launch a web server uh, from uh, your VS Code IDE, and it has uh, some simple support for doing live reload uh, as you're editing your files. And so if you go ahead and add that in, what you should see is a new button at the bottom of your IDE where it'll allow you to go ahead and launch your live server, and then you'll be able to take a look at the project. Another way to go ahead and run it is if you open up your command palette in VS Code, if you take a look for live server, you can go ahead and open it up that way as well. Uh, so if you're not using VS Code, you'll just need to have another way to go ahead and run your local web server. So you can actually take a look at the project template and to test your code and follow along. Uh, so if we go ahead and launch live server, what we're gonna go ahead and see is we're gonna see this here where we have our basic phaser three game. Uh, so we'll have the space background, we have our canvas element, and right now we're just printing out hello world. So then our browser, if we go into our developer tools and open up our console, we'll see our phaser three banner, and we're using phaser 3.80. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and work on updating our game configuration. Uh, so currently we have our game already set up for the configuration we'll need for this tutorial series. However, there's a few things I wanted to go ahead and call out in our main.js file. Uh, so when we create our phaser 3 game instance, one of the things we can do is we provide a configuration uh, that'll help set up and configure our game. And so one of the things we've already done is we went ahead and enabled physics for our phaser 3 game and we're using the default built-in arcade physics system. And so what this does, this enables the phaser three arcade physics system in our game. This allows us to create physics type game objects. So then that way we can move them by setting like our velocity. We'll have them move around our scene. And so when we configure this, one of the things we can do is we can specify the gravity for both X and Y. And then finally, you can go ahead and enable debugging. Uh, so while working on our game, I do recommend setting this to true. 
uh, what this is going to do is when we create our phaser three game objects, it's going to show our physics body as well as the direction that our game objects are headed. And it just makes it very helpful uh, while we're developing our game. And then before you launch your game, you want to go ahead and set this to false. So then that way it's not visible uh, to your players. Finally, we went ahead and targeted our canvas for our game type. And then we went ahead and added support for uh, pixel art. Uh, so when you do use pixel art, it's recommended to set this to true and set round pixels to true. Uh, that way it just looks very crisp when we render out our game assets. All right, so the last thing we need to do for our project setup is we're going to do some planning for our code. And the approach we're going to take for this game is we're going to try to encapsulate as much of our logic as we can for our various game objects into reusable components. And so what we're going to try to do is build out these components that we'll be able to share across our various game object types, uh, such as our player ship and our enemy ships. And we want to try to make this logic reusable. And then that way we can reuse these components in other game types. Uh, so as an example uh, for our game, we're going to have our mains player ship, and then we're going to have a few different enemy uh, variety types. And so for these game objects, we're going to let Phaser be responsible for rendering out our game objects. And we're going to use the built-in classes to construct most of our logic for these classes. Uh, so as an example, our player ship is going to be made up of multiple sprites. And so we'll be using the phaser container game object to put all these sprites into it and let phaser control that uh, container. But what we're going to try to do is reuse some of that phaser logic for like our keyboard input. We're going to extract this away into a component. Then that way all that logic is together and we can easily reuse this in other games. And so for our two main game object types here, our player and our enemy, they're going to have a lot of things in common and by putting this logic in one central location and attaching it to our various game objects it allows us to uh, reuse that logic across multiple classes uh, so as an example for our player enemies uh, if we talk about movement uh, what we're going to want to do is we want to be able to support both vertical and horizontal movement in our game and so for our player ship we're going to want to be able to support horizontal movement so moving left and right but we're going to lock our player so they can't actually move vertically versus uh, uh, some of our enemies, they'll always be moving down the screen towards us, and so they'll always have vertical movement. But then one of our enemy types, we can add on this additional horizontal component, and then that way we get a brand new enemy type that can move vertically and horizontally. And by putting this logic into one component, we can now share that code between these two classes. So besides our movement, we're also going to need some type of input so that we know how to move our player and our enemies. So we're going to build a generic input component that we'll be able to extend into other components like a keyboard input component that's going to listen for our keyboard events through phaser. And that's going to go ahead and set our input so we know if the player is trying to move up, down, left, or right. And then so for our enemies, they're going to have a special input component. Uh, basically, it's going to be a very simple AI. And it's going to be responsible for having those enemies simulate pressing the keyboard in the direction they want to move. Uh, so for example, this enemy here, uh, because they're just moving down the screen, they'd be pressing the down key. And because they do support a weapon, they would also be shooting at us. Versus this enemy AI here, they're going to be moving left and right, and so they need to alternate between those two states, and that's where this input component will come in. Uh, besides that, we're going to add a weapon component, so we'll just have a basic uh, weapon that the player and one of our enemies can fire uh, to fire bullets, and then this would be reusable, and we could extend it later if we wanted to do weapon power-ups, and different things like that. We'll go ahead and add in a health component for all of our uh, game objects. So then that way we can handle uh, our players being hit more than once and they'll have a life. And as they take damage, eventually their ship would explode if they take too much damage. To work with that, we'll also have this com collider component. So then that way we can track when our player or enemies uh, collide with like an enemy bullet or an enemy ship. And then that way we can handle it accordingly. And so besides these key components here, we'll also be adding some additional components that are going to help enhance our gameplay. Uh, so one example is for our enemies, we're going to create this enemy spawner component where it's going to be responsible for spawning more than one enemy in our game. And it's going to uh, use an object pool from Phaser. And so this component's job is going to be to constantly span, uh, constantly spawn out new enemies. Uh, based on some type of interval. And by creating multiple instances of this component, we can now spawn different enemy types, and we can easily extend this later to add more enemies. Besides that spawner, we'll also create one for where enemies are destroyed. And so this will also be an object pool, but what it's going to do is when an enemy uh, dies, we're going to go ahead and play an explosion animation 
uh, where the enemy was actually exploded. And in order for this to work, we're going to add this new component for our events. And basically, it's going to be an event bus that's going to allow our components to communicate with each other and to communicate with our overall game. Uh, so as an example, uh, we're going to pass this component to our enemies. And then that way, when our enemy is destroyed, it can emit an event that this spawner can listen to and we'll be able to go ahead and play that animation. Likewise, when the enemy is destroyed, we can also have like an audio manager listen for that. So we can play a sound effect when that event happens. And so this is just a high level view of some of the components and how we're going to structure them in our code base. And so this will make more sense once we dive into our code and we start covering these uh, one by one. All right, with that, that brings this video to an end. In our next video, we're gonna start working on adding in our player ship and adding in our components for handling player input. So as a reminder, there's a link in the description of the video to the clear source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see the links on your screen now.